Timmy. G'day. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. Mate, you've got a school bag. Of course you've got a school bag. I'm guessing what's in there isn't for kids, though. No, nah, we've got a treat for you today. <laughs> Tim Faulkner from the Australian Reptile Park has made a dash to the Bondi Clinic with a very special <laughs> six-month-old patient. And there he is. And Lewis is in a bit of strife. <laughs> Along for the ride is Lewis's twin sister, Luna. <laughs> So did you see what happened or do you know what happened to him? Basically they got up to a bit of mischief just running around and, and Lewis comes back and his leg is, you know, visibly sore. And it could be a bite, it could be a, a, a fall, it could be some sort of injury through play. Yeah, yeah they're definitely playing. Like, it hasn't stopped him, he's still nuts. Wait, can you tell us what happened? Yeah, I'll tell you. The rest will get a bit out of control, is it? Huh? I hate to say, it looks like you came on second best. Ah, oh, it's, it's just all one big yawn, is it? <laughs> You're all right. First, Chris needs to remove Tim's amateur handiwork. Oh, you stuck it on. First one I put on, he just tore it off, ripped it straight off. <laughs> so I'm trying to move this leg as, as little as possible, but he's just making these little grunting sounds. Yeah. Yeah. They give so little away, yeah. but the little grunting sound he's making, it's bothering him. Yeah. Lewis right now is whimpering from time to time. He's really guarding that leg. He's trying to hide it from me. So if it's worrying him, then it's really worrying me. An X-ray will tell Chris just how serious the injury is. Oh, don't do that. But Lewis is not planning to make it easy. But it's for, it's for comfort, right? Oh, it's just security. Yeah, security. They bite onto mum. That way. Your mum. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Gypsy. Hi, honey. At the Bondi Referral Hospital, Sash, emergency vet Lisa Chimes has been given a difficult case. Six-month-old Gypsy has been brought in after struggling to keep any food down for weeks. Want to go for a walk? Mm -hmm. This poor dog is absolutely terrified. Gypsy, Gypsy. I just don't know how we're going to find out what this dog's problem is. Mm -hmm. Aren't you come, come on, Bab, out of the cage. Come on, sweetie pie. Good girl. Come on, dog. I've been told that she's regurgitating, but without actually seeing her do it, I don't know how we're going to diagnose this problem. Oh, you're only a puppy. You shouldn't be like this as a puppy, bub. What's happened to you? She should be jumping all over me, wanting cuddles, being energetic and wanting food, and she's just cowering in the corner. So I'm worried that this dog's had something seriously traumatic in her past or lack of socialisation. Something's going on to make a six-month-old puppy behave like this. Hey, Dale. Lisa has now called in specialist Justin Wimpole to do further tests. Poor girl's very nervous, ain't he? So, we'll try some liquid, see how we go. Bit touch and go, I think, still. We'll try to go slow with her. So the test we're doing on Gypsy is actually like a live x-ray. So when she actually swallows, you'll see the food going down. And what we're hoping to find is the area where that food is getting stuck. Come on. No, it's just not going to happen. What about a bowl of food? Come on, Gypsy. Come on. <laughs> Wait for that. Justin's had no luck. The fluoroscopy, this test we're trying to do is an absolute failure. Hi, Gypsy. Hi, hey, honey. We haven't got a diagnosis. We don't know what's going on with Gypsy. We have to move on to the next thing, which is a CT scan and endoscopy under anaesthetic. I'm just trying to help. 
She doesn't quite get it that we're trying to help. No. This, this is normal, right? This, this means he likes you. He's just feeling safe. Oh, oh. Lewis, the six-month-old Tasmanian devil, is about to have his injured leg x-rayed. The youngster has become quite attached to Chris. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard a grown man make that sound. He's a dog, <laughs> all right? Fortunately, those baby teeth are not doing too much damage just yet. Pop. Good boy. He's being good, he's not struggling. Mm. X-ray. But I can see this straight away, mate. It, it's not great news. He does actually have a fracture there. Yeah. If we do nothing about it, then it's really gonna limit his life. Yeah. And he just wouldn't be able to breed, wouldn't be able to get around, wouldn't be able to survive. Yeah. I'm a little bit in awe of him how much he's been able to get around yeah. and put up with that. Yeah. I cringed when I, I saw the x-ray and I think, you know, what, what spirit these little devils have got. Right, Lewis. Huh? Broken leg, buddy. I hate to say it. We're gonna fix it, though. <laughs> Managing Lewis's leg. I can really see two big challenges here. First of all, he's growing, so we can't use a cast that's just gonna lock that leg in position for months. That won't work. But secondly, he's a tazzy devil. He bites and he chews. He will tear off anything I put near that leg. This isn't gonna be easy. <laughs> you know, I've done that exact injury. Same leg. You're kidding me. Same bone. Do you know how I did it? Yeah, tell me. On a dance floor. Boogie moves. Yeah. Oh, no. What move? A uh, running inverted worm. <laughs> <laughs> Landed and cracked the bone there. Maybe that's what Lewis did. Maybe. You gonna come clean, Lewis? Showing off to your sister. Easy, man. I can't use a cast in this leg for the simple fact that even if it's on for four weeks, six weeks, his leg will probably go a full centimetre in that time. If there's a cast over that bone, the bone won't grow. So he'll have one leg shorter than the other. What we need to do is give him some sort of splint that is strong enough to stop that bone from moving, but still flexible enough that the bone can grow within it. I'm amazed at how good he's been. He's been incredible. This is advice I know you won't listen to, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Just go easy. Take life slowly. Let's not panic. Let's just enjoy our youth in the slow lane, just for a few weeks. Is that OK? <laughs> It'll make a big difference. Hmm? What we really need from him is essentially the impossible for him to stay quiet. Yeah. This bandage will mean that he really stays off the leg a lot, but he's still going to try to push his limits because that's what devils do. Yeah. Four weeks maybe, because he's so young, yeah. could be enough. They've just got to stay off it. Yeah. For most pets that I see in here, if their leg isn't 100%, it doesn't really matter. They can get around, even if they have a slight limp. For a Tassie devil like Lewis, his leg needs to be 100% because in the future, he's going to go and essentially live in the wild. He has to survive there, but also he has to breed there. On three legs, he just can't do that. Look, I'm just impressed that two Tassie devils visited here and the yeah. only person that really got a bite was, was me. Yeah. No I dogs injured, no cats, no yeah. nurses. Yeah. No one was harmed in the filming of this segment apart from really me. <laughs> Gypsy. Gypsy. It's only food, sweetie pie. At Sash, Lisa's trying one last time to persuade the terrified Gypsy to eat. Come on, Gypsy. The six-month-old shepherd finds it impossible to keep food down. It's OK, honey. It's all right. It's OK. <sighs> Gypsy's owners, Roy and Hazel, have now been called in to help. It's OK, honey. Okay. Gypsy was Roy's surprise 70th birthday present after their previous shepherd passed away. She's very, very loyal. And uh, when we found out about this, I thought that uh, we're going to have her long. You know. Yes, I think that's the worry, that they'll find something really horrible and untreatable or something like that. I think that's the, the big worry. See 
what she does. And Jim, she wants to do something here in your back. Sit down. Come here. Come here. If Roy and Hazel can't get Gypsy to eat, the puppy will be forced to undergo invasive tests. Wait. Oh my goodness. I can't believe she's eating. Oh, we tried very hard to get her to eat. But within minutes of eating, Gypsy is becoming visibly distressed. Well, she's really looking agitated now. Ah, oh, she's feeling sick. Just regurgitated. Poor thing. Come on, Come on, this poor dog has really just been living with this chronic battle her whole life and no wonder why she doesn't want to be touched. She's got constant heartburn and that must be agony. It's all right, it's OK. Gypsy now needs a CT scan, but Lisa decides to send her home. The puppy is just too nervous to stay in hospital. We're a bit like people with kids having tests, you know, a bit anxious about what they'll find out and so forth, so I'll be glad when it's over. Hey guys, how are you? Next day, Chris arrives at Coffs Harbour in northern New South Wales to pay a house call to one of his most lovable patients. Now, Bucky's a bit of an old time, and the staff here are pretty concerned, so it's time for a checkup. You like it, back massages, don't you? Three years ago, 42 year old Bucky just survived throat cancer. Now, his longtime trainer and best mate, Greg, is worried the cancer has returned, this time in his mouth. Three years ago, when Bucky's cancer was first diagnosed, it was a treatment that nearly killed him, and Greg was convinced he was going to lose him. What are you saying about me, Greg? <laughs> Chris, hey. Good How are you? Hey, Good to buddy. see you. Hey, Buck. Hey, it's been a while. Hey, hey buddy. It's good to see you, Buck. How are you doing? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it is frightening what could happen um, you know, if it turns out to be cancer. All right, Buck. You're not the jealous type, are you, Greg? Come on, Buck. Here you come. Here you go, buddy. Hey. How's that? How's that? So Bucky was just six months old when he was found on a sandbank, badly lacerated, sunburnt, but he was brought in here and nursed back to good health by a 19-year-old Greg. They've been together for 42 years. Greg doesn't use the word love, but it's exactly what it is. It has really hit me hard when I discovered that was cancer in Buck's mouth. Um, there. Uh, I was there for him, to support him, and, uh, and give him that encouragement to fight on. And without that there, I don't think he would have made it. I can see what you mean, just on the oh. front of his tongue and just underneath his tongue, he's got a few little lumps. Yeah, yeah. So I guess the, the hope would be that those lumps are just from fish, where yeah. just little spikes in the fish mm. had gone in there and caused a little infection. But yeah. Yeah, obviously right. the concern is, with yeah, him right. having cancer a few years ago, that mm. maybe something's come back. Yes. He's like a brother and sometimes even <laughs> like a son. <laughs> it's a strong bond, yeah, a close bond. He's a real fighter, isn't he? Mm. He's been through a lot in his life, hasn't he? He, he has. The average life expectancy for a dolphin is about 20 years. At 42, Bucky is already a special survivor. Blood tests and biopsies will confirm whether Bucky faces another huge challenge. When you consider that three years ago, they nearly lost Bucky to cancer. For me to come back here today with the concern that the cancer's return, you can understand why it's a really nervous time for everyone here. Hello. Hi, Chips. Good. Gypsy. Six month old Gypsy is back at Sash and she's not impressed. Okay, Chips. She's not happy to be here. No. Gypsy is so anxious in this hospital. She's scared of vets. She's scared of anyone except her parents. All right, Chips. 
<laughs> we'll look after you, sweetie pie. Yeah. OK. Lisa's hoping to find out today why the puppy can't keep her food down and is in constant pain. Gypsy, come. That's the way. OK, bye-bye. I really feel for Roy and Hazel. They, they're so distressed and anxious. They've had Gypsy since she was a young puppy. Yeah, I feel like a mum preschool. I do love her a lot. The investigation starts with a CT scan. Very suspicious. But it's inconclusive. We've had a really good look at the CT, and as it gets lowered down towards the heart, there's some definite narrowing. So obviously something is, is making that area a lot more narrow, and that's where the food is getting stuck. The team needs more information. A camera is now being put down Gypsy's mouth through her food pipe. What they're looking for are abnormalities inside the esophagus. There we go. So you can see there's a severe narrowing here in her esophagus. That's really narrow. Yeah, so we can get through with our little scope, but you can imagine a whole lot of dog food just can't get through there, causing her a lot of distress and making her regurgitate. And imagine with all that saliva just sitting there, she's probably got constant heartburn. No wonder she doesn't want to be touched. Gypsy has a condition called a persistent right aortic arch. Now, it sounds all fancy, but basically it means that Gypsy's got an extra vessel in her chest near her heart that is constricting her esophagus, her food pipe. Gypsy now requires urgent surgery to open up her food pipe. Good girl. Her regurgitation problem has already caused her to be underweight, and there could be far more drastic repercussions. They could inhale some of that material that comes up. It could cause them to choke in their throat or worst case scenario, they could cause a terrible infection in their lungs and then she's dealing with pneumonia as well. So it's something we really have to fix. Good girl. <laughs> now, <laughs> once you know what has to happen today, I'm not so sure you'll be so keen on these kisses. At the pet porpoise pool in Coffs Harbour, Chris is about to find out whether 42-year-old Bucky has been struck down with cancer for the second time. No, 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 it's serious. Hey, it's serious work. And you're doing your best to make it less serious, I know, but... No, I'm... Don't try this. <laughs> Bucky. A bit nervous. I'm staying positive. There's not going to be anything, but you never know. How's he doing with the shows? I mean, he's, he's getting on in years. Yeah, he's getting on, but he's not showing any signs of slowing down. You know, yeah. he's, uh, he's a really strong animal, and yeah. um, he, uh, the, the excitement of the crowd you know, uh, spurs him on. Three, two, one. This was Bucky in action only two hours ago, doing what he loves most. He likes to be the centre of attention, you know, like any star. <laughs> the type of cancer that Bucky had was a squamous cell carcinoma. Hey, Bucko, you ready for this hole, mate? They're renowned for being very tricky to remove entirely. It looked like the job had been done incredibly well and it hadn't shown any signs of recurrence. But recently, these lumps have appeared, everyone's justifiably concerned. So what I guess I need is just for him to have his mouth open as, as wide as we can uh -huh. for as long as we can. Yeah, we can manage that, can we, Buck? Can we just give it a go first? Open wide, Buck. Yeah, see, that's just too rough there for my liking. I mean, it's normal for them to have little undulations in this area around the, the base of the tongue, but that one's just a little bit raised there. Yeah, yeah. In amongst the rough patches are some little nodules, and they're really what worries me right now because they just shouldn't be as raised as they are. I'm not saying it, it is the return of the cancer for sure, but there's enough evidence there to say that we should be worried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really do think we need to take some samples. I was hoping Chris was going to say it was uh, nothing, but. Um, mm. 
yeah, it's even a little bit more worrying now. Gypsy's going to have surgery. Um, the surgery would be open chest surgery. Um, so that's the part of the esophagus where the narrowing yeah. is. So they will have to open up her chest, have a look in there. Then she'll have to stay in hospital for quite a few days after that to recover. I think it's just that, you know, you get a dog in you, you know, especially someone like Gypsy, and then you find out she's got something like this. You know, it kind of hurts a bit. Oh, be no strong. Okay. Mm -hmm. The surgery is big and it's risky and it's painful, it's chest surgery, but the benefit that she might go on and be able to eat like a normal dog certainly outweighs all of that. I need a hug. You need a hug? <laughs> You'll be fine. We will look God. after her, it's I gonna promise be a long you. Night. It's going to be a long night, but we will. You know, we will give her all the love in the world. They are so nervous. There's some big things ahead and, and hopefully we can get it through this. Oh. Oh, she's still... The whole still here, Buck? At Coffs Harbour, Chris is continuing his investigation into the disturbing lumps in Bucky's mouth. Still Buck, still Buck. That's it, buddy. That's it. The first thing I need to do for Bucky is take a biopsy of one of those lumps, send it away to a lab to be analysed and check if it is cancer. That's it. OK, yeah, got it. Yeah, we'll sort things out for you, Bucko. Yeah, I'll find out what's going on. Yeah. You'll be right, mate. You'll be right. I'm with you, buddy. Yeah. The relationship between Greg and Bucky is pretty extraordinary when you realise that it's been going for 42 years. A marriage would be extraordinary if it lasted for that long. Friendships don't last for that long. It is just off the charts. You'll be right, mate. So the cells that are on this slide should really be able to tell us if Bucky's cancer's returned. Hey Aaron, could you send this off to the lab straight away? And just tell them it's urgent. No worries. Be great. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Anywhere. I'm staying here, all right, hon? Yeah, okay. At Sash, Gypsy is about to have her chest surgery. Hey, you're a good girl. Yes, you are. You're a good girl. Good girl. Even though Gypsy's had some sedation, she's still really, really nervous. And to see the look in this dog's eyes, she's just terrified so I'm gonna stay in the room until she's under anesthetic just so that she's got a familiar face. Right, Specialist surgeon Andrew Marchewski will attempt to fix the rare condition she has been suffering from since birth. Gypsy's got persistent right aortic arch which is a congenital abnormality that basically ends up with a narrowing of her esophagus and as a result when they try and swallow food, it just comes straight back up. If she keeps doing that for the rest of her life, eventually she's going to end up with pneumonia. And that can be catastrophic and they can die from that. Bleeding's always a potential problem in the thorax. There's lots of big blood vessels because you're right near the heart. We've just got to be really careful. That's the actual band of tissue there that we're going to be cutting out. So we're just going to cut one side like that. And then we'll grab the other side. And now you can see that band is gone. And now as soon as we've cut that, you can just see the esophagus expand. I promised Hazel and Roy that I would be there every step of the way. How's it going? Well, I knew you'd be interested. Yes. I mean, it's looking as good as we could hope. Well, we'll see how she goes. All right. <laughs> it's going to be a long recovery process. Gypsy's had big surgeries. You're doing really well, sweetie. Yeah. Mm, for good sleep. We're just going to have to wait and see how she goes day by day, one step at a time. I just want to 
easy to understand is to check out his lymph node, which is just sitting in this area here. Okay. If it's a normal size, then we can be more confident that he doesn't have cancer. All right. Just hold on, just do it. Just relax. There you go, mate. Doesn't hurt. At the pet porpoise pool, Chris is now performing an ultrasound on one of their major stars, 42-year-old Bucky. Nice and still. Just relax, mate. The dolphin survived throat cancer two years ago, but now new lumps have been found in his mouth. If this cancer was going to spread anywhere, it would spread straight to that lymph node. So this is a really crucial part of working out what's going on with Bucky. OK, yeah, we've got one now. All right. If that lymph node's enlarged, then it's a bad sign that the cancer may have spread. All right, so we've got this little bean-shaped area here. That's our lymph node. I'm just running some measurements here. So, Greg, I just want to have a look at this. It's 28 millimetres by 18 millimetres. For him, that's normal. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's, so great that's really news. good. Yeah, that's great news. So, yeah. obviously, look, we still have to find out if he does actually have little tumours inside his mouth, but even if he does, I'm pretty confident mm -hmm. that they haven't spread. Oh. Oh. So, it's a good result. Yeah. He's happy as well. <laughs> You happy, hey? You happy? <laughs> I'm staying positive. There's not going to be anything, but you never know. I'd still like to take some blood, though. Yeah. It's probably handy while we have him here mm. just to see how healthy he is. Yeah. I was going to use this upper aspect of the tail just along this white line here. Mm. Beats taking blood from a dog. <laughs> I'm taking blood from a dog. You've got the jugular, you've got the teeth right there here. <laughs> it's just sitting right here. <laughs> You're amazing, Buck. This is where he shows his age in a way, isn't it? Love bites from girlfriends. Okay. Most likely. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're done. The bloods will now be sent to the lab for urgent analysis. All Bucky's results will be back within 24 hours. Now we just keep our fingers crossed that it isn't the cancer back again. Bucky, we should have some good news for you tomorrow. I hope, huh? No promises, mate. It is going to be a really tough night tonight. Obviously, I'm hoping for the best, but preparing myself for the worst. And if it is bad news, if it is cancer, then I need a plan I can kick into action pretty much straight away. Yes, bucket over. Yes, yes, it's all right. That's all right, mate. That's all right. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Hi. Hi, Chris. Hey, have Bucky's results come through, yeah? Ah, uh, yes. Next morning at the pet porpoise pool, Bucky is enjoying some R&R, &R, while his longtime friend and trainer, Greg, is working with Daisy, the sea lion. Open wide. Thank you. The results of Bucky's tests have been fast-tracked. Mm. Yeah, it's not really what we were hoping for. We've got Bucky's results back. No, it's not good. No. So it has come back as being cancer. Really? So um, it's saying it's a squamous cell carcinoma, so it's the same thing you had before, mm. just a recurrence of it. So, mm. I'm doesn't sorry. Sound, doesn't sound good. Mm. No. So I, was, I was spraying it, it turned out to be uh, nothing uh, serious. But, yeah. uh, mm. Was it the results uh, I was hoping for? But um, it is what it is. And, yeah. We've got to accept that and deal with it so, uh, the best way we can. Mm. You right? Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit shocked, uh, <laughs> really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 I wasn't expecting it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, uh... Telling Greg, it, it, it's a very hard thing to do. You know the history between them, you know those 40 odd years of connection they have. So you're telling him essentially that his best mate is seriously ill. It's not nice. At his age, I'm just not confident he'll get through a major yeah. operation or get through chemo. So mm. I've come up with something that I think will work, mm. but also something that's not going to be too trying on him. No, that will be good. The priority of Bucky's treatment really has to be that he stays happy and healthy. So the treatment I have in mind, it's going to be short, it's going to be sharp, it's going to be to the point. But importantly, what I have in mind should kill off this cancer pretty quickly. Come on. Come on, mate. Hey. Look, hey, sorry to let you know, but we've got some bad news, mate. Mm -hmm. It's not good. Hey, it's not good, but we'll be right. 
been through uh, this before with Buck, and uh, yeah, he's strong. I'll stand by him and uh, give him all the support I can. No interrupting, am I? Yeah, not at all. All right, hey Buck. So this is what we're going to use. So there's liquid nitrogen in here. So I just need him, just as he was before, just his mouth nice and, and wide open and yeah. still. That's yeah. the most important thing. Okay. All the, yeah. Oh. Impatient? <laughs> yeah, impatient. He's ready to go. What I'm going to do is use cryotherapy. So essentially we're going to be freezing these lumps off. That's okay. So you can see how that lumps turn white. The reason for that is that all those cells are frozen. So we wait for them to defrost, and then we hit them over and over again three or four times, then you get every chance of really killing off that cancerous tissue. You're doing good, Buck. You're doing really good. I am gonna go and get your mum and dad. What do you think? What do you think about that? You want to see Mum and Dad? Yes, I do. It's been 24 hours since Gypsy's chest surgery. Today, her owners, Hazel and Roy, will find out if the operation has worked. I was a bit emotional all day. Well, you know, like, pretty apprehensive, wondering how it's going to turn out. Hello. Good, how are you? Good, good little yeah. baby. You ready? Yes. Come on. Okay. Okay. I don't want her getting too excited, but I know she will. Gypsy, hello, darling. Gypsy. Hello. Hello. Oh. Hang on, Gypsy, sweetie. I'll open it in one sec. I just don't want her to get too excited because she's had chest surgery. But as soon as she sees them, she's just wanting to jump all over them. We're trying to keep her calm. But the poor little girl is so excited to see mum and dad. Mum and dad. Just stand here. Not too much excitement, huh? <laughs> Good girl. It's not dry food just yet. It's a little bit more solid yeah, than solid liquid, so we'll we'll transition her very slowly. Okay. But this will be a really good test to okay, see how no, she no, goes. No, no, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Will Gypsy finally be able to eat a meal without pain? Very good girl. Okay. Good girl. girl. Okay. <laughs> Off he goes again. <laughs> Uh, really happy for her. She's your baby, isn't she? Oh, how good's that? <laughs> she can reach her potential now because uh, I think this was going to only get worse and uh, we could have lost her and that's unthinkable. Last time she would have already brought it up by now. Yeah, oh, absolutely. She would have been in great, great distress by now anyway. So how does that make you feel? Good. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. That is exciting. Yeah. And she's smiling. Yeah, she Big is. smile yeah. on her face. She's just like a different dog. I can't even describe the progress that we've had. This is one of the most exciting things I've seen. I saw how hard it was for this little girl to eat and now she can eat like a normal dog and that is just priceless. In Coffs Harbour, Chris is trying to freeze off the cancerous tissues in Bucky's mouth. Doing good, Buck. You're doing real good. A little bit longer, mate. A little bit longer. There we go. We're done, mate. Hopefully, this treatment will give the 42-year-old patient another lease on life. That treatment's gone really well, and it's gone really well for one reason, and that is that Bucky stayed so incredibly still. Hang on, mate. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. You're amazing. Huh? You're very good. Very brave again. Yeah, he's one of a kind. There's no doubt about it. He's a really unique dolphin. He's got so much trust and so much to give. He, he really amazes me sometimes. <laughs> 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 The best reaction to cancer treatment I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Is he for real? I didn't want to be the person that came in here today and told Greg this bond, this partnership of 42 years was coming to an end. But after seeing Bucky's response to his treatment, I've got no doubt that he'll be showing off for a lot more years to come. 
You're welcome. You're welcome. I said it. Hmm? Anytime. Hello. 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 Come on in. At Sash, it's been three days Hello. since Gypsy's risky surgery. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Roy Jimmy. and Hazel had almost given up hope of their little girl having a normal life. <laughs> what an incredible reunion. Gypsy was jumping all over Hazel and then jumping on Roy and back to Hazel and Roy and she just didn't know where she wanted to be but she just knew she feels good and she feels happy and life is great. Well, I am. <laughs> Did we come to get you? We were always going to come and get you. Oh, you got your girl back. We have. Huh? We got her back. And you, miss, do I get a goodbye hug, please? I got such a warm hug from Roy and Hazel, and the first time they ever hugged me was to say, please look after our little girl. We hope she gets through the surgery. And now they've given me a big hug because everything's worked out and they're getting their little girl back home as a normal dog. It's just wonderful. Come on up. Thank you. It's looking good. Look at that leg. <laughs> How good is your leg? You're running. Four weeks later, more good news, this time at the Australian Reptile Park, where baby Lewis is back in action with his sister Luna. The cast came off a week ago, and from the moment it came off, he was strong. He, his leg has shown no signs of tenderness or anything. He's, he's using it like a normal devil. He's running, jumping, fighting with his sister, everything we could have hoped for. <coughs> that leg looks good, buddy. That leg looks good. Your sister won't be able to bash you anymore, mate. Your leg's all better. You're all strong again. Joining us here today, Dr. Chris Brown. Let's give a lovely job. Thank you. And Chris is back in Coffs Harbour to check on Bucky's progress since his cancer treatment. I really had that coming, didn't I? Now, Bucky, I would like to say a lovely big thank you to Dr. Chris. What are you going to say, Buck? What do you say? Whoa. With a big kiss. <laughs> wow, you're really, you're really lingering on that I never thought I'd say that I'd come home from Coffs Harbour with, let's be honest, Pash Rash. Wow. <laughs> big kiss. Give them both a big round yeah, of applause. I know you're grateful, but that's... <laughs> Ready, Buck? Oh, That's great kick. One. Bucky's underneath it. What a take from Bucky. You got it. No video rest. Now we're going to forward it off to Zip. OK, Zip's taking it. To see him come out and perform and put on what was an extraordinary show. It's amazing. He's such a trooper. He's got such a strong spirit and such a desire to make people happy. He and Greg have got a lot of happy years ahead, I'm sure of it. We'll keep working together. We'll keep that um, strong bond and that strong relationship going. We'll be here together for a long while yet. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.